The intent of this video is to review the combat effectiveness of German air-to-air -air rockets adopted in destroying bombers and or disrupting their formations. This video is easily paired with the channel's German aircraft 20mm and 30mm cannon descriptive videos. In this Masters of the Air trailer clip, a German aircraft is launching an air-to-air -air rocket and destroying a bomber. We will come back to and unpack this clip with regard to historical accuracy. In the summer of 1943, the Germans needed a standoff type weapon which could be deployed to either destroy U.S. heavy bombers or disrupt their formation. Standoff implies the ability to attack outside the range of the bomber's defensive firepower. In mid-1943, bombers were flying in a tight, disciplined 54 aircraft formation, as shown on this image. The combat wing is comprised of three groups, a lead, high, and low. Each group contains 18 airplanes. This image represents four combat wings heading towards a target from a 1945 declassified Army Air Force Board document titled 8th Air Force Tactical Development. The combat wings are shaded. They are spaced 6 miles apart and at an altitude between 20 and 30,000 feet. Long-range fighter escort was not yet available. The aircraft flew relatively close to one another to take advantage of the mutual protection provided by the wing's defensive firepower. That's 594 machine guns ready for air-to-air -air engagements per combat wing. The range of the machine guns varied with station and direction. Little to no deflection forward and rear firing guns could reach out to 1,000 yards. Otherwise, the effective firing range was around 600 yards. This chart from a 1945 War Department technical manual titled Handbook on German Military Forces outlines attack policy of the German bomber interceptors. Concentrate attacks on single combat wings or groups. The breakup of the formation is the goal, where bombers lose their force multiplying mutual firepower. Attack from the sun, but attack will be based on the situation. Both single and mass attacks were conducted. Twin engine fighters were adopted for rocket attacks. This page from a 1983 Office of the Air Force historical document titled The Army Air Forces in World War II, Volume 2, describes a typical rocket attack. Large formations of twin-engine fighters lobbed rockets into the formation from around 1,000 yards, attacking from the rear. Rear-stern attacks were more accurate in estimating the rocket's detonation range and low to no deflection shot is needed for accuracy. Aim for the front of the formation. Refueled single engine fighters can attack the stragglers. Once the rockets are expended, the twin engine fighters can attack the bombers with their guns. Concentrate attacks on one formation at a time. Break it up with rockets and then attack the stragglers with gunfire. This chart outlines the German attack tactics of the Schweinfurt II ball bearing mission in October of 1943. The single-engine fighters attacked from the front, while the twin-engine fighters lobbed rockets from the rear at distances around 1,000 yards. This chart from a December 1943 headquarters of the 8th Air Force document titled German Fighter Tactics Against the Flying Fortress outlines two typical rocket attacks encountered. In the rocketeer attack, five or six enemy aircraft approached and lobbed rockets from distances between 12 and 2,000 yards. The last group over the target was attacked. Bomber advice, maintain formation discipline at all costs. In the twin-engine tailpeckers attack, a single rocket-equipped twin-engine fighter is weaving from the rear of the formation, closing the distance to be within rocket range. Bomber advice, hit him when he is within range and flying straight. This chart shows the distances of a typical rocket attack. The twin-engine fighter attacks from the rear at a distance of 1,280 yards. This is outside the tail gunner's range of 1,000 yards. The destructive effects range is roughly 50 feet, as shaded here. The rocket-equipped BF-110s is bomber interceptors traveling to an air-to-air -air engagement. This page from a 1946 document titled German Explosive Ordnance outlines characteristics of the 21-centimeter high-explosive spin-stabilized rocket. A spin-stabilized rocket is more accurate than a fin-stabilized rocket. The rocket is 49 inches in length, 8.27 inches in diameter, or 21 centimeters, and weighs 241 pounds. The warhead contains 22.4 pounds of an explosive fill, which is around 10 times the explosive fill of a German 88mm caliber cannon projectile. These rockets were also adopted for ground-to-ground -ground engagements. 
Additional description and a cross-section of the rocket is shown on this page from an October 1944 Handbook of Enemy Ammunition Document. It is fired from an airborne projector. The time fuse equated to the model ZTZS-30. This is the same fuse adopted by the 88mm caliber flat guns. This chart lists a U.S. equivalent T-36 rocket patterned after the German 21cm rocket. Rocket burn time is 1.5 seconds and dispersion is estimated at 12 mils. Dispersion is a measure of the projectile's accuracy. The lower the value, the more accurate the weapon. A fighter firing a 50 caliber machine gun can expect a dispersion of 4 mils for 75% of the rounds, as discussed on this 1945 Air Force manual titled Fighter Gunnery. A fighter's machine gun has one-fourth the dispersion value of the rocket. A rocket's main advantage over a cannon is the absence of recoil and lower system's weight, but it will be less accurate, have a slower projectile, and the rocket's exhaust will need to be accounted for. The rocket's tube is mounted on the rocket to be fired at an up angle relative to the guns given its arced parabolic trajectory. This is why all documents indicate the rockets were lobbed into the formation, not fired. The rocket's time of flight to detonation was set to around 5 seconds. A description and cutaway of the rocket's fuse is shown on this page from a September 1945 U.S. Navy technical report titled German Mechanical Fuses. Key points are a Krupp type design. The fuse's detonation train is triggered by time only, not contact, not proximity. If the fuse's descriptor starts with ZTZ, then the fuse starts the detonation train by time only. Fuse runtime can be set up to 30 seconds. 18% of these fuses failed to perform during the African campaign due, due to a broken mainspring. To recap, the rocket-equipped aircraft would approach the formation from behind, ideally speed match the formation for better range estimation, and when at 1,280 yards, lob the rocket into the formation. The rocket will detonate 5 seconds after launch. If all goes to plan, the rocket detonated close enough to either kill or produce enough chaos to scatter the bombers out of formation where they would be attacked by gunfire. The problems the enemy aircraft faced were the inherent inaccuracy of the rockets, limited rocket capacity, the fuse time setting was fixed that could not be changed in flight, and the extra weight and drag which reduced the performance of the plane. The other issues with regard to rocket deployment are discussed on this page from a 1957 document titled Development of German Aircraft Armament to War's End. The plane's reflector site was used to estimate the distance. Combat reports indicated the attacks were not accurate due to the rocket fuse's time range was not precise enough for air-to-air -air engagements and the method of range estimation was not effective for the long distances needed. So how did the U.S. counter the rocket threat? Long-range fighter escort was the only effective response to the rocket-equipped twin-engine bomber interceptors, as discussed on this document titled, A History of the 8th USAAF Fighter Command. The long-range escort P-51 Mustang has canceled out the effectiveness of the rocket-equipped German twin-engine bomber interceptors, as discussed on this April 1944 Weekly Intelligence Summary. Rocket-equipped twin-engine bomber interceptors needed their own fighter escort, which made them a liability more than an asset. The P-51 and P-38 long-range escorts rendered the rocket-firing twin-engine fighter attacks obsolete. There is conflicting data regarding the combat effectiveness of the rockets, as success should be measured by the number of formations dispersed rather than the number of bombers shot down. This snippet indicates the rockets were a force with high capabilities. This page indicates rockets took their toll, but the danger was greater from 13mm and 20mm gunfire from an Air Force Historical Studies document titled The Combined Bomber Offensive. And this 1944 Air Force report states that German deployed air-to-air -air rockets have not been particularly effective. Let's take a look at the Masters of the Air rocket attack clip. This is a close-range 3 o'clock beam deflection rocket shot from an FW-190. The fighter is firing the rocket from around 300 yards. This is based on a one-second time of flight. The fighter will need to aim, taking into account his plane speed, rocket speed, angle of launch, and target lead. The rocket's fuse is armed to detonate around 5 seconds after launch. 
the rocket will not detonate on contact. It will just pass through the bomber unless it sets off the plane's bomb load. In that case, then we will have detonated around 3,000 pounds of TNT, which is around 55% the explosive fill of a single tall boy bomb. Now, of course, anything can happen in the heat of battle, and the series may be embellishing the clip for dramatic purposes. But do you agree that sufficient German rocket usage tactics evidence shown to at least question the Masters of the Air attack sequence. If you found this video worthy, please consider liking, commenting, and or subscribing to the channel World War II U.S. Bombers.